Hello and welcome on SPCL's YouTube channel. Today I have the pleasure of presenting one of our recent projects to you. This project is called Sparse Hemigraph and it is a customizable network on clip topology. Let's start with the question, why do we even need network on clip? As you all know, today's clips have an increased number of compute cores. And traditional solutions to provide connectivity between cores, such as a single crossbar or a shared bus, are no longer scalable. In a single crossbar case, the area of the crossbar does not scale well with the number of cores, and in the shared bus, the performance of the bus does not scale well with the number of cores. The state-of-the-art solution to this problem is deploying a network on chip. A network on chip consists of routers and links between them, and whenever a tile here represented as a light square box wants to send a message to another tile, it then checks the message into the network and the network delivers the message to the destination. When designing such a network on chip, an important choice is that of a topology. The topology refers to the way in which we connect the routers with links. Let's have a look at some metrics of interest when comparing different network on chip topologies. We are mainly interested in the cost and the performance. The cost can be further divided into the network on chip area. We can express this in percentage of total clip area and the power consumption of the network. The performance can be divided into the saturation throughput and the latency. Throughout this talk, whenever we compare different topologies, we do this by showing two plots. We show a cost plot and a performance plot. The cost plot has the network on chip area on the y-axis and the power consumption on the x-axis. This means that if a topology is to the left and to the bottom, it has a lower cost, and the performance plot has a throughput on the y-axis and the latency on the x-axis. And here, if a topology is to the left and to the top, it means that this topology has a higher performance. Also, if we want to compare different topologies, we need to assume some sort of architecture. And we always depict the architecture in one of these gray boxes. So let's start with having a look at some established topologies. In today's chips, we often see ring or mesh topology. These topologies come at low cost, but they also come with limited throughput. To alleviate this issue, Academia has proposed high performance topologies, such as slim knock or flattened butterfly. These topologies come with excellent throughput. However, they also come with very high cost, which is the reason why they are not seen in practice. And finally, we also have a set of topologies that are between cost and performance. So for example, we have a 2D torus, a folded 2D torus, or a hypercube. All of those provide some sort of trade-off between performance and cost. However, each of these topologies only provides a rigid trade-off between cost and performance. So if we, for example, say our design goal is to build a chip where the network on chip does at most occupy 40% of the area, but for this area budget, we want the highest possible performance, then we are kind of limited with the choice of topologies that we have. This raises a first challenge, namely that the NOC topology should be adjusted to our design goals. Let's also talk about the influence of the architectural parameters onto our metrics of interest. Here you see the same picture that I have shown two slides before. And I would like to put this side by side with an analysis of a second architecture. Here, the only difference is that the architecture on the right has two cores instead of one core per tile and twice the tile area compared to the architecture on the left. As you can see here, the cost performance trade-off that a similar topology achieves heavily depends on the architecture. If we, for example, have a look at the hypercube, which is the orange square, then we can see that in the left architecture, it achieves about 60% throughput, while on the right architecture, it only achieves about 30% throughput. So here we can see a second challenge, namely that the NOC topology should be adjusted to the architectural parameters as well. And in our project, we want to tackle these two challenges. We do this by providing three different contributions. We derived design principles for network on clip topologies, Based on these principles, we propose the customizable sparse hemigraph topology, 
which comes with an adjustable cost performance trade off. And to actually perform the customization of this topology, we developed the fast tool chain for cost and performance predictions. Let's have a look at our design principles. We divide our design principles into two categories. We have principles to minimize cost, and we have principles to maximize performance. To minimize cost, we should use low radix topology. This is because the area of most on-chip routers scales quadratically with the router radix. We can see this if we plot the network on-chip area on the y-axis versus the router radix on the x-axis. As you can see, in most of the cases, when the router radix is increased, then also the area increases. A second principle to minimize cost is to design for routability. What we mean here is that when designing the topology, we should already consider the routing in the VLSI backend and also try to avoid routing congestion. To maximize performance, we should use low diameter topologies. The network diameter is the maximum number of router to router hops that the packet takes from its source to its destination. Hence, if we use a low diameter, we have less hops per packet and therefore a lower latency of packets. But there is a second and actually more important effect based on the diameter. If each packet takes less router to router hops, then each router needs to process less packets. And therefore, we have less congestion at routers and therefore a higher throughput. We can see this if we plot the throughput on the y axis versus the diameter on the x axis. As you can see here, the smaller the network diameter is, the higher is the throughput. And finally, our fourth design principle is to minimize the physical path length. This is because the latency in the on chip setting depends on the physical distance that our data is traveling. So, based on these top design principles, we now develop our sparse Hamming graph topology. Here on the left, you see our four principles again. And the first observation was that if we use a simple 2D mesh topology, then we already comply with three out of our four design principles. The problem of the mesh topology is that it has a rather high diameter and therefore very limited throughput. To alleviate this issue, we want to add additional links to the topology. We do this based on two parameters. We have a set SR, and this set specifies the per row connectivity, and we have a set SC specifying the per column connectivity. Say, for example, we have the integer 3 as a member of the set SR. This means that within each row of tiles, we add a link between two tiles whenever these tiles are exactly three hops apart. So in our example, we would insert these green links. Then if the set SR, for example, has a second integer as a member, say the number 5, then we do the same. We connect any two tiles in the same row that are apart exactly five hops. So we would insert these red links here. And for the columns, we do exactly the same. Now we can set these two sets, SR and SC. And based on this, we can steer the trade-off between having a low router radix, meaning low cost, and having a low network diameter, meaning high performance. But how do we select which integers to put into these sets, SR and SC? To do this, we developed a fast tool chain for cost and performance predictions. Our tool chain takes our topology as well as the architectural parameters as an input. These inputs are fed into our custom network on chip model. This model then outputs an area estimate as well as a power estimate. Furthermore, this model estimates the latency of each router to router link. These link latencies together with information about the router architecture, routing algorithm, and traffic pattern, are then fed into the BookSim2 network on chip simulator. The simulator performs cycle accurate simulations in order to estimate the latency and throughput of our network. Let's have a deeper look into our custom network on chip model. We model each chip as a grid of unit cells. A unit cell can either contain part of a tile those are here the cells in dark gray, or they can be available for the routing of links. 
that are here, the white cells. In this grid of unit cells, we then perform approximate floor planning and link routing. Based on this approximate floor plan, we can estimate the area that is required to build a clip with a given network on clip topology, and we can also estimate the power consumption. Furthermore, since we know the approximate length of all the links, we can estimate link latencies, which are then used by BookSim. So those were our three contributions, but can they actually solve the two challenges that we have set ourselves? Let's have a look at our evaluation. Here, assume that our design goal is to maximize the throughput and minimize the latency without exceeding a network on chip area of 40%. So this is our example architecture that we use for the evaluation. And here we see how the established topologies perform in this setting. By customizing the sparse graph topology, we can get very close to the 40% area line. And among all topologies that are within our area budget, here are the ones highlighted in yellow, we provide the highest throughput and the second to lowest latency. So based on this evaluation, we can say, yes, we can actually adjust the topology to our design goals. But what about the architectural parameters? Here, we put this evaluation side by side with the second architecture. Here again, we increase the number of cores per tile from one to two, and we also increase the tile area. Here you see how the established network on clip topologies perform in the second architecture. And as you can see, none of them is close to the 40% area line, but below it. By customizing sparse Hamming graph, we can again precisely hit our area budget. And among all topologies that are within the area budget, here the ones in yellow, we provide by far the highest throughput and again, the second to lowest latency. So we can say, yes, our approach can also be used to adjust the topology to our architectural parameters. So let's come to a conclusion. With our project, we facilitate adjusting the network on chip topology to design goals and to architectural parameters by providing design principles for network on chip topologies, by providing the customizable sparse Hamming graph topology with an adjustable cost performance trade-off, and by providing a fast tool chain for cost and performance predictions. If you are interested in more talks from SPCL, feel free to continue browsing our YouTube channel. If you want to stay up to date with the lab, consider following our Twitter. And if you are interested in our code, for example, the fast tool chain for cost and performance predictions, then consider visiting our GitHub page.